Hello and welcome to Neobiotech International Virtual Seminar. Thank you for attending this webinar and my name is Chi Hun Shen. I'm going to be your host tonight. Before we start today's webinar, I would like to briefly introduce about schedule in this month. Dr. Kalinik from Italy, who is an old friend of Neobiotech as a GAO member, gratefully is here for us. And the lecture will be in English. On 29th, which is next week, Dr. Murad from Jordan will present the lecture. For August, next month, our lecturers will continuously present their knowledge to share on every Wednesday. As the first lecturer of August, which is 5th, Dr. Christopher C.K. Ho from Australia will be with us. On August 12th, Dr. Seal Park from U.S., a formal professor at UCLA, is scheduled to share his agenda about implant stability. These two lectures will be in English, and the other following two lectures will be in Spanish. On 19th, Dr. Daniel Carcelmo from Spain will present a lecture, and for the last term of August, on 26th, Dr. Prada from Chile will join us to share his knowledge. These last two lectures will be presented in Spanish. We would like to welcome you all at time. Please be advised that there is no translation service in different languages other than the lecture speaks. And also please notice that all the lecture schedule is based on the GMT hour, it's Greenwich region time in England. So you will either be informed by your distributors or managers, or you just need to Google to figure out lecture time in your time zone. All right, for today's webinar, Dr. Galani from Italy will speak about how to achieve optimal aesthetic with post-extractive implants and immediate function tips and tricks. He will kindly share his experience and knowledge for about an hour. During the webinar, if you have any questions, please use the chat button to communicate with me about any issues other than the topic. We will have Q&A session after the lecture, so please submit your questions through Q&A button. Dr. Dalini may not answer for all the questions because we have limited time to take the answers for all. If you have more questions or anything for discussion, you can contact Neobiotech website, which is neobiotech.com, or find Neobiotech Global Department on Facebook. So from now on, let's have Dr. Galani to start. Please welcome Dr. Galani. Hello, Doctor. How are you? Hello, Shin. Thank you for your kind presentation. And I would like to thank uh, everybody who is present in this uh, webinar. I can see people from all over the world. I hope that you are all in safe and peace and that you are doing well. So I start to share my screen. And <clears throat> for this uh, lecture, I will present uh, my clinical practice. I will show you uh, some tips and tricks to try to achieve optimal aesthetic in post-extractive implant and immediate function. I think that probably you will have some question for me, so don't be shy, uh, make any question you want. I try to answer them during the webinar or I will answer at the end. But if you have any question, it's very important for me to, uh, to know which question you have. So, <clears throat> now, sorry, just one moment. I have a, a small problem. I have to 
stop share one moment and to enter again. Okay. As always, you, you try, you make reversal every time and something always might go wrong. So, okay, let's start. Now it's working. If everybody are here this evening, uh, we have to thanks to Professor Peter Anamark, who in 1977 introduced to us his very important study about integrated implant and we must remember that at that time implants were used only to recreate function for the patient not to recreate aesthetic but now 2020 we know that something has changed we can use uh, implant for uh, aesthetic to obtain aesthetic we can use implant uh, with a post-abstractive technique for the functional or immediate loading. We can use custom abutment, computer-aided implantology, short implant, and so on. So everything has changed from the time of Professor Brennemark. But we must remember that the dream of a patient that comes in our office is to come in the office when uh, one tooth that must be extracted and to extract the tooth, insert an immediate implant and insert an immediate provisional crown. After some months, after one year, when you will have the healing of the soft and dark tissue, you can perform the final restoration. But please remember that very important for the patient is to realize a new tooth, a new crown. The patient doesn't matter which kind of implant you will use, which kind of technique you will use. He only has to you, please doctor, I want a new tooth and I want a nice tooth. So <clears throat> first of all, I would like to give you some example. And this is a young lady. She was 30 at the time of uh, at the end of uh, this uh, rehabilitation. And uh, this is how she came in my office. After that, she had two immediate post-extractive implant and two immediate provisional crown. But this uh, was the final rehabilitation, not the provisional rehabilitation. So I think that now it is not correct for our patient to end our work in a situation like this is not anymore acceptable to rehabilitate a patient and to end with the final crown in a very bad aesthetic solution, with a very bad aesthetic solution. Let me show you another patient. Uh, this is another young lady. She was a 35 at the time and uh, she uh, came in my office, she was desperate because uh, her previous dentist, when she had a problem with, with one tooth, he extracted the tooth and insert an implant and so on. And after six implant in the upper jaw and one implant in the lower jaw, in the lower jaw this was the situation of the young lady of Enrica uh, with uh, her provisional crown. So once again, I think that it is not any more acceptable to leave the patient in this situation because we took four years and 12 surgery to transform her from the picture on your left to the picture on your right. And now Enrica can smile again. But I think that in now 2020, we are obliged to give also aesthetic to our patient, not only function uh, as 40 years ago. So we must remember that we are in the fast food century and the patient came in the office requesting has immediate implant, immediate prosthesis, 
immediate success. But on the other hand, we have the implant company that want, uh, that want to uh, push us to insert immediate implant and immediate prosthesis. So our work could be a nightmare if we don't have clear ideas, if we don't have a direct treatment planning. So <clears throat> what we have learned over these 40 years, 30 years, we have learned that of great importance is the, the treatment planning. Today, we do not have enough time to go inside every um, key factor that you can see in this slide. But please remember, every key factor is very important to obtain success and especially to obtain a very nice aesthetic final result. Today, I would like to stress the fact that from uh, last 20 years, we had a great change in the treatment time. Why? Because more or less 20 or 15 years ago, when I have to extract one tooth in the posterior area, as you can see here in the picture on your left, or I had to remove an implant, as you can see and on your right, I was used to remove the implant, to extract the tooth, to wait at least three or four months for the healing of the soft tissue, of the hard tissue, and then perform the implant uh, with or without any regenerative technique. And once again, after three, four, five, or six months, we were able to realize a provisional crown and after the provisional crown, a definitive crown. So <clears throat> we had, I had the same approach <clears throat> 15 or 20 years ago. And if I have to rehabilitate the lower or the upper arch, if uh, I had some hopeless teeth, I was used to extract them waiting with a provisional restoration for the healing of the soft and dark tissue. And after three or four months, insert the implant, wait again for the healing and the os integration of the implant, and then realize the final prosthesis. But everybody knows that in 1997, uh, some author started to publish uh, some articles about immediate loading, like uh, the ones of Tarno or Balci. And after them, there was the publication of Paul Malo. Paul Malo did a lot of publication about immediate loading. So if we go into PubMed and we type the words immediate loading implants, from 1977 to 2020, you can find more than 3,000 3, 3, of uh, publication. And if you go deeper inside the question, if you type placement of implants into a fresh extraction socket, you will see that from 1991 to 2020, you will see more and 300 result. That's why in the last 15 years, I change my approach. So usually I try to do every time when it's possible, immediate implants. Obviously, obviously I started to use this approach with the uh, complete arch rehabilitation. So I started to do this with a situation like this, where I have to extract all the tooth, all the teeth, and to insert the implant, to take an impression, and to realize an immediate provisional restoration. So the patient uh, came in the office with his own teeth, and he went out of the office with new teeth, provisional teeth, uh, screwed into the implant. We can do this approach not only for uh, 
uh, one arch, but you can do also a double arch rehabilitation with immediate implants, post-abstracted implants. Obviously, is a little bit more tricky, but you can use this approach every time you can. And so, in a situation like this, it is very easy to extract all the tooth, insert some implants, four implants in the upper jaw and four implants in the lower jaw, and to splint them with uh, a provisional screw at prosthesis, one in the upper and one in the lower jaw. Obviously, after the experience of the complete arch, we tried to treat with this method also the single tooth. So we started to uh, try this, uh, to do this approach also when we have to extract one tooth, for example, like in this situation for the presence of a root fracture and insert the implant, insert a provisional crown and the patient can go out of your office with a new tooth screwed into the implant. So you will have to wait for the healing once again. Uh, once again, you have to, healing, to wait for the healing of a soft and dark tissue, but you will not have to perform any surgery. And after the healing, you are able to realize a new restoration screwed over, a final restoration screwed over the implant. Obviously, you can have the same approach in the posterior area. When I have to extract the tooth in the posterior area and I don't have any um, situation of infection, I can extract the tooth and insert an immediate implant. Then we will discuss later about the importance to make a bone graft and obviously also a soft tissue graft, but maybe in the, in the posterior area, you can make only the bone graft and after three months, you will have a very nice healing ready for the final rehabilitation. Obviously, if you work in the posterior area, you can choose between immediate function or not. And probably in this situation, the best solution will be not to perform the immediate function. But sometimes we have patients that ask us the possibility to have an immediate crown. So if you want and you have enough stability, you can also perform the uh, immediate provisional crown. One year ago, one year ago, the European Academy of Osseointegration Integration sent a survey to all the member and during this survive, there were some questions. One of the questions was, do you believe immediate implant will be placement after tooth extraction will be more frequent, similar or less in the next 10 years? And you can see here the result of the survive. 61% consider more frequent there now the uh, immediate placement after the tooth extraction. And what about the immediate loading protocol? Do you believe that it will be more frequent, similar or less in 2030, so in the next 10 years? Once again, the answer was clear. More than two thirds of uh, the clinician consider more frequent the immediate loading protocol and one third similar. So we think that in future, the immediate post extract implant will be something that everybody will do in his office. I think that um, in my office, in my clinical situation, immediate post extractive implant with or without a provisional prosthesis is the ideal solution. So every time I can, I have to deal with this technique. And I will try to explain which are the reason for me to do this and how you can maximize the aesthetic result with this method. 
Let me show you this case. We have an implant rehabilitation. We have uh, one molar and one premolar uh, screwed over two implant just at the end of the prosthetic rehabilitation. We can see that uh, we have a pretty nice result. And uh, if, you, if you see the picture on your left, we have also a good amount of uh, keratinized tissue. And this was a conventional uh, in implant insertion, so not an immediate post-extractive implant insertion. So we have, a, we have, we extract the tooth, waiting, waited for uh, three months, insert the implant, then wait again three months and perform the final rehabilitation without any provisional crown. And what I would like to underline to you is that during the six months of healing of the hard and soft tissue and of the implant, we lost um, a great amount of vocal bone. If you can see the arrow of my mouse, here you can see the natural tooth with his vestibular, vestibular bone surrounding him with the keratinized mucosa. This is an implant and you can see that we lost some bone. We had enough bone to insert the implant, so I did not perform any regenerative technique, but you can see very easily that we lose some buccal bone. And also, or, or especially in the molar area, we lose a great amount of bone. I think that will this, uh, this patient, when he will chewing, he will impact all the food in this area. And probably he will came in your office at the checkup control in the next 10, 20 years. And he will say to you, doctor, very nice tooth. I can chewing uh, everything I want, but every time I chewing, I have to clean my teeth because I have some food impaction in the, some food impacted in this area. So let me show you another situation. Here I had to insert two implant, one in the first molar and one for the second molar. But as you can see here, I still have the root, the roots of the first molar. So I perform a post obstructive implant immediate implant and I perform a delayed implant in the second molar area because the tooth was extracted years ago. You can see here the, the two implants inserted, you can see here the bone graft and also the collagen membrane covering the uh, area. I used to insert at this time collagen membrane in this case. This is a a pretty whole case. I think I performed this case 10 years ago, more or less. And you can see here the healing after three months, and you can see here the final rehabilitation just screwed in. Once again, you can see that we have in the first molar, we have the maintenance of the, the vestibular bone, of the bundle bone, and we do not have any bone vestibulary to the second molar. There was enough, uh, enough bone to insert a 4.0 or a 4.5 millimeter implant, but once again, probably this patient will have food impaction in this area. So that's why every time I can, I prefer to extract the tooth, insert the implant, to uh, make a little bone graft just around the implant and to use some collagen to cover the space between the keratinized mucosa and the implant. So this is the X-ray just at the end of the surgery. And after three months, you can see here a very nice healing. In all these cases, I just perform post abstractive implant in the posterior area without any provisional, okay? 
And here you can see the final situation with the implant screwed in. Another situation, I had to extract the second premolar and the first molar and the lower arch. And once again, insertion of a implant, post-abstractive implant, insertion of a bone graft and three months of healing. And you can see that after three months, you will have a very nice healing. You will have the maintenance of the bone in the vestibular component. So <clears throat> this situation is more interesting if you consider the anterior area. Obviously, in the anterior area, we have to insert not only the implant, the bone graft, and also, as I will show you later on, a soft tissue graft, but we have to insert the provisional crown because the patient will not left your office without a provisional crown. So <clears throat> I will discuss about the characteristic of a provisional crown later on, but once again, this is the situation on the left just after the surgery. This is the situation six months later. And you can see here that we have all the buccal bone vestibulary to the implant. This is a canine and we have all the buccal bone over the canine that, that was maintained. And this is the final rehabilitation. Obviously, in a very few number of cases, I cannot perform in the anterior area this method, especially when I have, as you can see here, superation and maybe also a fistula like this. This tooth was fractured and there was also separation from the fistula, so I prefer a delayed approach. But obviously, when you plan, uh, when you're planning a delayed approach, you have to deal with soft tissue and dark tissue resorption. So you have to deal with implant insertion, with the possibility to collect some bone, for example, with the ACM burr here from the retromolar area. Sorry for the sirens outside. And to perform a, a regenerative technique with a titanium mesh. So we have to wait for six months. After six months, we perform the reentry. We took a digital impression and we insert a provisional. And now we have to wait again for the soft tissue healing. At least we have to wait one year or more. So this is the final situation, which uh, is ended up about one year and a half after the extraction. So <clears throat> I think that we are in front of two different treatment philosophies. If you perform delayed him. And as we can see later on, you have also to improve what is there. So which is the rationale to do an immediate implant? Obviously, as I have already said, the preservation of the site and of the alveolar bone, and you will have to improve, I must say, the alveolar bone, and we will discuss later on about this, you will have an easier provisional management. You will not have to deal with Maryland bridge, with removable prosthesis, so more comfort for the patient. Remember, for the patient, the patient as a dream came in your, to came in your office with or his tooth and to go out with a new fixed provisional crown. You will have uh, less risk of papilla loss during surgical procedure, and obviously you will have a faster healing, a reduced treatment time, you will perform less surgery, and the patient will be very happy of this fact. 
So which are the key factor that we have to consider to obtain an excellent aesthetic result if we have to deal in, with the anterior area? Because uh, up to now, I have shown to you some cases in the posterior area and probably the posterior area is an easy area to approach with a post-extractive implant. The anterior area will be more challenging, but probably will be not any more challenging for you if you keep in mind the key factor that we are going to discuss now. So the question now is how we can influence <clears throat> the aesthetic outcome of a soft tissue in the frontal area. And we must keep in mind some key factors. First of all, we must consider the marginal level of the tooth or of the teeth that you have to extract. When you have to extract one tooth, as you can see in this picture, you can have three different clinical situations. We can have a situation where the uh, marginal, uh, where the margin of the keratinized mucosa is apical than the margin of the contralateral tooth. In this case, will be probably a very unfavorable case. Also unfavorable is the situation where you have the same level of the tooth that you have to extract and of the contralateral tooth. And more favorable will be the situation where you have a marginal level of the keratinized mucosa, which is coronally positioned respect the contralateral tooth. But unfortunately, this happened very rarely. Why is the two situations that I have shown to you are unfavorable? Because we are all aware about the recession of the soft tissue and so about the final result. So please, first of all, analyze the marginal levels and then analyze the tissue. Everybody knows that 15% of a patient has thin and scalloped tissue and 85% of, of a patient has thick tissue. So we know that we, when we have to deal with thin tissue will be probably more challenging for us the situation than we have to deal with thick tissue. How we can understand if our tissue is thick or thin? This is the typical question that probably you can uh, make to a student. If you can see your probe going deeper than one millimeter into the sulcus, and you can see the probe uh, in transparency under the soft tissue, this is a thin tissue. If you can see uh, probing the tissue around the tooth, a sort of ischemia, and uh, if you can see here that the probe goes um, into the tissue and you cannot see anymore the probe, probably this will be a thick tissue. Another key factor is the smile line. It will be very challenging to replace this two central incisor in this patient with this height smile line, and it will be easier to replace those two central incisors with this patient with a very low smile. So you have to analyze all this factor when you see and you visit your patient. Then we go deeper, another key factor, which is the bone quantity. Everybody knows from the study of Lind of Araujo that uh, if we insert an implant into a post-extractive socket without any graft, we can have the osteointegration of the implant and we can have new bone around the implant. 
because of the jumping distance concept. This is true, but if you analyze the histology of the work of Araujo and Lind, and here on the right, you can see the histology at the zero when they insert the hemant into the extraction socket after one month and after three months, so day 90. And what you can see? You can see that the implant is well integrated after uh, three months. You can see that the new bone is grown around the implant, but you lost the bundle bone. You have lost all this bundle bone. So imagine to have this in the anterior area. This will be a great problem for you. Let me show you one of my first cases. I performed these cases, uh, I think, 15 or 16 years ago. I had to extract this tooth because of a root fracture. So I extract the tooth, I insert the implant, I have just read the article of Araujo. I know that uh, here we, I will have some bone regrowth, so I insert the provisional crown. I screw it in the provisional crown. And this was the healing. Okay, you can see here, 2004, 16 years ago, I insert the final prosthesis. And you can see on your right, the control checkup after 10 years, so 2014. The crown is still pretty good. The keratinized mucosa is good is not optimal, but is fine. But if you can see the patient, if you take a look to the patient from a lateral point of view, you can see that the implant is not sufficient to maintain the buccal bone, to maintain all the buccal bone volume. Here we have a concavity. And the concavity here means that when the patient smiles, she shows a black area. So please trust me, every time you have to deal with a post-extractive implant insertion, you have to insert also some bone around the implant. Do not, you do not have to insert only the implant because the, adjusting, the jumping distance works, but is not enough. So let's go on. Another very important uh, key factor, the implant position. This probably is the most important key factor. You have to keep great attention to this uh, situation, to this uh, implant insertion, because you can insert the implant in three different situations. You can insert an implant too much uh, buccal, as you can see in the first image, image you can insert the implant just in the center of the post-extractive alveolus, or you can, insert, you can insert the implant too much or in a palatal position, palatal position. Now, after more than uh, 20 years of post-extractive implant, I can suggest to you that the ideal position is the third one, where, when, you insert the implant slightly palatally, as you can see in this image. So you don't have to go just in the same direction of the tooth, uh, of the root of the tooth, of the residual alveolus, but please move a little bit uh, palatally. You will be helped to do has if you uh, and analyze the cast stone models of the patient. And if you analyze the diagnostic walks up of the patient to understand which ill is the ideal position uh, in which you have to insert the implant. Today, obviously, we can use virtual diagnostic walks up, but the process is the same. You can go digitally or you can go with an analogic method, but the situation is similar. And what is important is to create the correct surgical stand. 
Usually, I spent one hour to speak about the characteristic of the surgical stand because it is very important to create an ideal surgical stand to analyze all the parameters and to insert the implant in the ideal position. But obviously, we don't have uh, now, we don't have time to stay one hour discussing about the surgical stand but you have to use, uh, especially for your first surgery, the surgical stand because it's very, very helpful. And another suggestion that I have to use to, to you is to utilize a very thin burr uh, if you are dealing with a delayed site, as you can see here, or if you are dealing with uh, a post-abstractive implant. Because if you have a very thin burr, you can exactly insert the implant in the correct position. You can drill exactly where you want. The, the drill is not slippery inside the alveolus. I use this kind of burr, which in Italy we call ferrox. But you can use other method. For example, you can use a magnetic method which is a manual method, so you can uh, prepare the site with this kind of technique and go with the burr just after that you have decided which will be the final position of the implant. But please take attention to this fact, because if you insert the implant too much buccally, you will have a very thin bundle bone and you will compress it with the implant, with the prosthesis, and compression means resorption. So you will have uh, probably a recession. And you can see here two of my initial cases where I had some recession because the implant were not inserted in the correct position. If you stay inside into the uh, mm, post-abstractive uh, uh, area, probably you will have a good aesthetic final result, but you must perform a cemented crown. And now, in the last 10 years, I prefer to perform screwed crown. So if you stay slightly palatally, you can screw it in your crown without any cementum, and it will be very easy to manage the soft tissue and you will not have any recession. So take, please take care of this. I will show, for example, this patient that I saw in my office more or less uh, one year ago. So not a lot of time, not uh, a lot of time ago. And this was an old lady, she was 80, but uh, she is still in good condition. She had to extract the anterior teeth and she wanted to fix a bridge with an immediate restoration. But the doctor at the end of the surgery said to the patient that there was no possibility to perform an, a fixed prosthesis. So insert the implant and he said goodbye to the patient with uh, a removable prosthesis. Why the doctor say that? Because when I open the implant and I try to realize a fixed prosthesis, this was the uh, inclination of the implant. So uh, obviously the, those implants are very buccally inserted, but if you insert the implant too much buccally, you will have 100% uh, resorption. So you will not have a very nice aesthetic result. And it has been very tricky for me to realize a fixed prosthesis. I had to utilize uh, some uh, multi-units to, um, to uh, create a straight position for the screwed restoration. So take attention also to the mesiodistal position. You must have at least 1.5, two millimeter between the adjacent teeth and the implant. So don't use too much bigger implant. 
and go deeper, three millimeter under the um, amelo uh, cementum junction or under the uh, free uh, gingival mucosa. So this is important, but the most important thing is to do uh, the correct implant insertion with the correct position. Let's go on, on with another key factor, which is the biotype convention. As I told in uh, the first uh, minutes of this webinar, very important is to maintain the soft and dark tissue, but also to improve soft and dark tissue. We have already spoken about the necessity to do a, con um, a bone tissue graft, but you have also to improve the soft tissue. So you have to perform a connective tissue graft. Always in the anterior area, I perform a connective tissue graft or I use, as we will see uh, later on, some tissue matrix. In the posterior area, I perform only the uh, bone uh, graft, not also the connective tissue graft, but from canine to canine, I, use, I usually perform connective tissue graft. We have learned how to do this uh, connective tissue graft in the 2000 from the study of Grunder. So it is 20 years that we deal with this concept. And every time that the patient allow me, I perform this kind of procedure. But sometimes the patient does not allow me to do a connective tissue graft because now the patient is very well informed. He can go uh, in internet and understand if there is any substitute of the connective tissue. So we can use, for example, tissue matrix. And um, there are few tissue matrix in, present on the market. And this lady, for example, uh, didn't allow me to perform a connective tissue graft. So I perform, as you can see here, a, um, the insertion of a tissue matrix between the keratinized mucosal and the alveolar and the residual alveolar vestibular bone. So uh, we insert the implant, we insert the provisional, and after one year, we were ready for the final crown, we had a nice soft tissue healing and we had the maintenance of the uh, buccal bone of the profile of a central incisor. So this was the final situation. Few months ago, uh, about six months ago, I started to deal with this new material, we see which is Forcing connective tissue. It uh, is a connective tissue taken from the pork and you will have a, a great quantity of connective tissue. You can choose between different sides. And so it's very easy to use this kind of tissue. You don't have to go uh, to take the tissue from the pellet, but I don't have um, cases with longer term follow-up because I started to use this kind of material in November. So uh, I can show you this case, for example, but I don't have a great follow-up. This patient has to extract the central and the lateral right incisor. Uh, you can see here which was the situation. We had performed the virtual diagnostic, uh, diagnostic walks up the surgical stand, everything that is necessary, the provisional, and we go on with the surgery, we extract the tooth, we insert the implant into the correct position, and we perform the bone uh, graft around the implant and also the connective soft tissue graft uh, between the keratinized mucosal and the residual portion of the alveolar bone. This was the situation when I checked the position of my two provisional crown and with my technician, we have realized 
two provisional crowns that are also the surgical stent, and we can fix them over the two adjacent teeth. So we prepare and we realign the two uh, provisional crown. This was the situation when the patient left the office. And this was the situation one month just after the surgery. On the left, the situation before the surgery and on the right, the situation, but just one month after the, sur the surgery. So I don't have any long-term follow-up. I can say that it's a very uh, interesting material because it's very easy to manage this kind of material. And I know that to maintain the volume of the buccal bone of the uh, uh, vestibular bone, we can use also the socket shield technique that was proposed by Marcus Hurseler uh, 10 years, more or less 10 years ago. And with this technique, you can maintain the vestibular part of the root in order to uh, don't have a very thin layer of bundle bone. And so you can uh, maintain in a very simple way the vestibular component of the alveolar sulcus. But I really don't like this technique because I don't think it's very easy for me to prepare the thin layer of the, um, of the root uh, of the tooth. And also that I think that probably there might be uh, in Italy some medical problem if, for example, I will have a perimplantitis around this implant. So usually I prefer to use this kind of method only in old patients. For example, in this patient, she was 83 years old, and I don't want to perform any connective tissue graft, any bone graft. So I think it was easier for the patient uh, just to extract the tooth and to prepare, uh, extract, extract partially the tooth and to prepare the vestibular part before the implant insertion. With this technique, you can have a very good, a very good maintenance of the bone volume in the vestibular part. But as I told you, I usually, this is the final restoration of this old patient, 83 years old at the time of the final restoration. But usually I prefer not to, to deal with this kind of procedure. So now let's go to the last key factor, which is last but not least, because probably is the most important thing, the provisional crown and the abutment design as a very important key role in the uh, final aesthetic result. First of all, you have to choose the correct temporary abutment. And I think that the temporary abutment of the neobiotech implant system is a very interesting abutment from this point of view because you can choose between different length and different diameter of abutment. And this is very, very important. Why? Because you can deal with different situation. <coughs> Sorry, if you have different length abutment you can deal when, with a situation where you have a very um, minimum quantity of pace between the uh, upper jaw, for example, and the lower jaw to create a provisional crown. But you have to deal in situation where you have a, a great uh, space and you need a very long uh, temporary abutment. I have tried different kind of abutment and sometimes uh, the temporary abutment are not enough in length to perform a good provisional crown. With this technique, for example, with this temporary abutment, you can utilize as a temporary the crown of a patient uh, of root that you have to extract. This patient has this root with a very big decay 
and we decided to extract the root, insert the implant, and to utilize as a provisional crown the uh, zirconia crown that was already present over this tooth. So we extract the tooth, we insert the bone graft. In this case, uh, it's not necessary to do to perform the connective tissue maybe, and we align the zirconia crown and we screw it in the zirconia crown just after the surgery. And this is the situation of one week after the surgery. And you can see here the zirconia crown connected with the temporary abutment. And uh, you can see here some spaces because we have the acrylic raising here over there. The problem of this technique probably will be that the patient will stay longer than one year with this provisional crown. So you have to, uh, do, to deal with this fact. The key factor with a provisional crown is the shape of the provisional to uh, create the correct emerg emergency profile. And please don't do any um, convex profile, but please perform a concave profile. Why? Because convex profile create compression and compression over the tissue create ischemia and ischemia means resorption of the soft tissue and of the hard tissue. So when we had to create, to shape our provisional, we have to shape the provisional with a concavity, a 360 degree concavity all around the provisional crown. With this method, you will have the possibility to increase your soft tissue and to have a very good quality soft tissue, sorry, after the healing. With my friend Marco Redemagni, we published more than 10 years ago in 2009, a very interesting study in the European Journal of Aesthetic Dentistry about soft tissue stability with concave abutments. And uh, we understand that if we perform concave abutment, we will have uh, a very good quality of the soft tissue around the implant. If you unscrew the provisional crown, you will have some connective tissue fibers which go horizontally over, uh, uh, sorry, uh, around the uh, provisional crown that create a sort of suction. So it will be very difficult for you to remove the crown also if you have unscrewed the um, the provisional. The problem might be the possibility to transfer this information to the lab. Why? Because once you have a concave abutment and you use a custom, uh, sorry, a, a standard transfer to uh, take an impression, you will not give this uh, very important information to the lab. So you need to create an individual about an individual transfer, and you must utilize the HINS technique, which was published more than 23 years uh, ago. Why? Uh, for example, I go back a little bit. Yeah, the first of all, you have to unscrew the crown from uh, the implant and to connect the crown with the uh, implant analog. Then you take some polyether material, some impression material, and you put all this complex, the promisional crown and the implant analog inside of the impression material. After a few minutes, you can unscrew the provisional and you will have the copy of the emergency profile. And you can see in the central image that if you are going to use a standard transfer, you will not, you will miss all this information for the lab. So you have to add some acrylic resin, you can add some composite uh, if you want, you can add some pattern resin. I prefer the acrylic resin around the uh, transfer. And you can go 
back to the mouth of the patient to take the impression. When you will finish with your impression, the transfer will be inside. You can bring everything to the lab and the lab will develop this stone model with the correct emergency profile. And so the final crown will have the correct emergency profile and you will have very nice tissue around your implant and you will have a very uh, nice situation also from an aesthetic point of view, not only from a functional point of view. Obviously, uh, you can do this directly inside uh, into the mouth of the patient, but I don't like to do this with the acrylic resin or with the composite uh, directly uh, inside around the implant because I think that you will have some tissue contraction, you will have less detail, and it is more difficult uh, to manage for you and for the patient. So I prefer to do this separately. But today I go digitally, so I will not take any more this kind of impression because I will take digital impression. So I will use scan abutment and I will use scansion of the, the area where I have to perform the final rehabilitation with the scan abatment. And uh, also, uh, you, have, you have to scan, you have to scan not only the um, scan abatment, but you have to scan also the provisional crown. Because if you scan also the provisional crown, it will be uh, possible for the lab to match the two files, to match the two image, and to, to create the correct crown with final crown with the correct emergency profile. So now the question is, uh, we have understand that every time that I can, I perform uh, immediate post-abstractive implant and every time that I can, I perform also um, immediate provisional screwed over this implant. But can we do this only in the anterior area? No, we can do this also in the posterior area. We can do this also with sinus lift. You, we can do this also with GBR. But please keep in mind, never do the, this with the last tooth of the arch because it is very dangerous. Obviously, you can keep, you can do uh, an immediate implant, an immediate post-extractive implant for the last tooth of the, of the arch if you have the possibility, but never do an immediate mm, provisional crown in the last tooth of the arch. You can do this situation for multiple implant in the anterior area. We had to extract the two lower canine and we insert the two implant with a provisional screw at the restoration uh, immediately inserted. And after uh, six months, we had this kind of healing. And once again, you can see that with the bone graft, with the soft, soft tissue graft, you can maintain the volume of uh, the bone, you can maintain the contour of the bone. And so you can realize this final restoration, screw it over the uh, implant. Obviously, you can treat multiple area. For example, uh, the lower inferior arch, if you need to treat this area with the same situation, with the same technique. It is very easy to do this, but you have only to keep in mind the concept that we have discussed before. And before I hand my webinar, uh, I would like to show you that you can do also a sinus lift procedure and also a small regeneration when you have to extract a tooth like this 
and the lady said, no, doctor, I don't want to stay without uh, my tooth for six months. So you can perform um, the tooth extraction, the heat implant insertion, the regeneration, and a very small um, crestal sinus sleeve procedure, as, I, saw, as uh, I will show you later on. Once again, you have to realign the provisional, you have to create a concave uh, emergency profile in order to have the uh, correct healing of the soft tissue. And after uh, six months, you will be ready for the final prosthesis. And once again, you can see that you have no uh, lose of the buccal bone, you will have no concavity in this area. So you, this is a, an old case more than five years ago. You can perform the impression. This was an analogic impression, regular impression, but you can perform uh, also with this technique, your final screw with the restoration. And you can see here that we had a very small amount of bone into the sinus with a crestal approach. So dear colleagues, I am at the end of my presentation. And before I hand it, I would like to present you uh, an article that we published um, three years ago, because sometimes when I present the concave profile, uh, the question, uh, of the audience was, how can the patient clean this concave profile? And the answer was, the patient has not to clean over there. He has not to clean uh, deeper around the implant. But <clears throat> I had um, to think about that. And so I started to analyze the soft tissue response after 10 years, uh, after 10 years of single post-extractive implant with immediate uh, loading. And once again, together with my wife and my friend Marco and another friend of us, uh, Angelo Calderini, we published this uh, article. And uh, after 10 years, we had 98.6 uh, survival rate, which is quite good after 10 years. And please remember that we performed this implant, 147 implant between 2002 and 2005. So we don't have the knowledge uh, that we have now after 20 years, but we still have a very good survival rate, a very uh, low beating on probing, and in, in the pocket uh, probing depth was 2.75 after 10 years. So it's a very good uh, result, I think. So please, dear colleague, I am at the end. Please keep in mind, you don't have to be a superhero, but you have to make things simpler, but not as simple as possible. Thanks for your kind attention. And I am here to wait for your question, if you have some question for me. Okay, let's go in the chat box. I see some friend from Italy and from Georgia. We can wait for uh, some minutes if you have any question, please don't be shy. I try to answer to your question. In Italy is uh, quite dinner time and I know that uh, in Asia is night. So probably <laughs> you need to take a cup of coffee to stay awake. So maybe, oh, maybe there is, oh, <laughs> uh, this is a comment of a friend of mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
if you have any question, I, I am here to answer to your question. Here you can see my email, my LinkedIn and Facebook, Facebook uh, contact. If you have question in future, maybe when you try to to do this technique, please uh, don't be shy, send me an email, send me a message and I will try to help you uh, from Italy by the social or by email. Right, thank you, Dr. Galani. And it's thank my you. turn now again. Uh, let me share. I stop to share and I say bye bye to everybody. Thank you very much for your lecture, Dr. Galani. Please stay connected with Neobiotech social media to communicate with us more. Search Neobiotech Global Department on Facebook or Neo Biotech on YouTube. Please click follow, like, and subscribe to get more updated news. This lecture will be uploaded in our website also as on our YouTube channel, YouTube channel, so you can review this lecture later at any time. For the next upcoming webinar, it will be on 29th, which is next Wednesday. Dr. Murad will be with us to present the lecture. The title is Predictable Rich Augmentation and Preservation, Decision Making Tech and Techniques. And the lecture is in English. Please remind that we do not have any translation service. If you have any questions or need more information, Please email us to either bees at neobiotech.com or gabriel.li at neobiotech.com. And we have more information in our website and social network service as YouTube and Facebook. And we are very happy to take your opinion on today's webinar is share a minute for us. There will be an extra pop dot screen just like this you can see and they have only five questions. Thank you very much for your participation and Neil Biotech will always try hardest to improve the quality of your satisfaction. Right. Let me start the survey. And I'll hide the answers. Thank you for, um, thank you all for being with us tonight. And thank you, Dr. Galani again for your presentation. We'll see you in next week. Have a great night. I will leave the survey page open. Couple more minutes for you to finish. Thank you all.